Hey, Marcel. Hey, Derek. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Good. How are things in Wooster? Not too bad. Just uh, we're at the two week mark for what's remaining in the school year. So looking forward to two weeks from now. Right. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a little hectic. How are things with you? Good. Yeah, everything's good. Just plugging away. <laughs> I kind of like when my three year old's in preschool, so I'm actually kind oh, of yeah. on the op opposite end of that. Makes things easier. Yeah, and she likes it a lot too. So she doesn't like just sitting in her house. Yeah. A little more social time. Yeah, for sure. Let me see if I can. Does that look okay this way? Yeah. Um, you might want to make it like full screen. Yeah. Let me try that one more time. This should be like a presentation mode or something. Yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> How's the weather down there? It's actually been really nice the last few days, about 65, 70 degrees, been perfect. Good time to go to a park. How about out there? Uh, it's starting to get like that. We're, I think we're kind of getting into the 60s, but it's been, it's been so windy. That oh, it, yeah. it, it feels more like the 40s, to be honest. So. Yeah, that wind chill, it's for real. Yeah. The Northeast is, from what I can tell, it's usually a little slow on the uptake for spring. Yeah, the weather's very volatile this time of year. You can you can have to be bundled up in winter clothing one day, and then the next day you're wearing shorts. Right. <laughs> yeah, my brother used to live in New York, and I remember that. I, I visited him in April once. I was like, man, this is all over the place, this weather. <laughs> It is. I, I remember. Um, I remember one time when I, when I used to walk to campus from my apartment. It was three consecutive days. One day was like a fall jacket day. The next day was so cold you couldn't have skin showing, and the next day was short. <laughs> That's wild, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Tim. Hey, Marcel. So I have to tell you, Marcel, yesterday or the day before, I forget which, a buddy of mine texted me a picture of the beer he was drinking. It was MC Squared. Oh, I really? Said, <laughs> I said, oh, I know that one. <laughs> did, did he know your, our, that we knew each other? No, he didn't. I told him about it. I said, yeah. I said, I've had that one. I said, I know one of the guys who's part of the brewery. Oh, that's so funny. Well, we had, it, we had that together um, in D.C., that's I think, when we just went on draft. Okay, was that the one that was out there? I forget. I forgot what beer it was when we went out there at uh, Rasika, I think, or something like that. So yeah, I, I remember everybody was game to go because it was the one place that had it. Yep. And then I remember we killed the keg too between the our, our table. <laughs> right, right. Oh, that's cool. Small world. Yep. Small world. Well, maybe we'll give it another. Uh, minute or two for people to join. I talked to Saeed Perudistan today and he said he was going to try and join. So hopefully he'll be here. Kristen said she's going to try to make it, but she's going to, if she can, she'll be a little bit late. Yeah. You know, again, it, 
I apologize for having to move the time. We're usually doing these Thursday at four o'clock Eastern time, but uh, I teach four to 5.30 on Thursdays this spring. So, uh, um, but with the semester ending in two weeks, we'll revert back to Thursdays after this one. Good. But, So there were a few other people who said they were joining. Um, right, it's only a couple minutes after. Yeah. How's the weather in Michigan? Uh, today it is not half bad. It's up to 50. Nice. It's supposed to be 70 in another couple of days and then back down to 50. So we come and go like everybody else. Yeah. I don't suppose anyone wants to hear about Southern California. Well, I was going. I was going to say how. No, boo. Like, <laughs> we're in Southern California. Um, San Diego County, North Park. Oh Chamber. goodness! Oh yeah. We will all be there in November, Teresa, to see you. So don't worry. Yeah. First slide. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> where the hilton uh i think it's called bay shore it's right by the airport what city in san diego in yep. san diego okay cool yeah i've had i have friends that live in the chicago area and when they come down here every day i mean they've been coming down for years and in the old days they would immediately open up the newspaper back when we used to have actual physical newspapers and look at the back for um, the temperature where they live every day. And they would, they would compare the temperature where they were living to what we were experiencing. And we'd have to talk about it every single morning. It's a big deal. <laughs> oh, sounds like a lovely place to live. It is. I want to say hello to everyone. Hi. Hey, Saeed. Hey, how, how are you doing? Nice to talk with you today. Yeah. Uh-huh. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Okay. Well, I guess we're we're at about four minutes after, so maybe, maybe we'll get started. Um, thank you, for everyone, for joining. Just a few things to mention at the, at the onset here. We have our 2022 annual workshop and conference coming up in November. So the workshop will be on Wednesday, November 2nd, and Thursday through Saturday, November 3rd through 5th will be the national conference. Details to be announced soon, except for the location, which will be the Hilton in San Diego. So we encourage everyone to try and plan to, to join for that. Uh, if you want to, be, to keep current in the PSM world, we have a monthly PSM newsletter. So if you're if you would like to subscribe to that, just send me an email. Uh, I'll, I'll put my email in the chat in just a minute. We also have the Chronicle. So if you would like to feature your PSM alumni or graduates, this is, this is a venue to do so. And you can see the upcoming issue of the PSM news for submission information. And we also have the Innovator, which is a peer reviewed manuscript for sharing best practices. If you are interested in being involved uh, in volunteering for NPSMA committees, just let any of us know. Um, you can really ask anybody on the board, but again, feel free to let me know if you're interested in doing so. And if you're consider, you know, we, we strongly uh, encourage you to consider membership in the NPSMA. Some of the benefits include reduced rates to the national conference, presentation opportunities for students at the annual conferences, Close relationship with the Council of Graduate Schools, which can result in presentation and grant opportunities. And then we have our webinars like this, where you can get involved uh, and you can watch previous recordings of these on our YouTube channel. We also have PSM focused for virtual recruitment fairs in fall and spring. And we have a Slack channel that you can join if you'd like to be part of our network and community of program directors. We also have a presence on social media. So we are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And so I encourage you to connect with us on social media. 
And that leads us to what we're going to talk about today. So today's Ask NPSMA session is about best practices for connecting PSM students and industry mentors. So I think we can go ahead and kick this off as kind of a, a round table discussion. So this is meant to be really an informal discussion about this topic. Um, we have seven of us here, so maybe I think we can start with a quick introduction. Everyone can introduce themselves, maybe say where you're, what school you're affiliated with and uh, what your position is. So since I'm already speaking, I'll, I'll introduce myself. I'm Marcel Blaze. I'm at Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Worcester, Massachusetts. We have PSM programs in financial math and industrial math. I'm a math faculty member. And so I direct our financial math program and um, I'm also very involved in the industrial math program as well as a bunch of other stuff in the, in the mathematical sciences department. I've been involved with the MPSMA for a long time. Um, maybe we'll go kick it off to Derek. Sure. Uh, I'm Derek Payne. I'm the coordinator of operations for the NPSMA. Uh, worked here since last August. So I'm not actually with any school. I'm just with all of you, with everybody. But I'm happy. Everyone's really nice. So that makes my job good. <laughs> I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah is where I live working remotely. But... Okay. Thank you, Derek. How about Teresa? Sure. Teresa Macklin, Cal State University, San Marcos. I'm program director for the cybersecurity master's program. And uh, it's very interesting that I'm not actually, well, I teach, so I'm a lecturer. I'm not actually, I didn't come through faculty. I was the chief information security officer on campus. And when they were bringing up a cybersecurity program, they kept, as they kept asking me about it and I kept telling them what they were doing wrong until finally I started running the program. So I'm semi-retired now. Um, I retired from my chief information security job and I'm working just part-time running this program and teaching some of the classes. Oh, very cool. That's, that's such a cool way to be involved with the program. Yeah, it's really interesting to not be a faculty. I was with the campus for like 25 years not be a faculty, then all of a sudden can entirely shift your perspective to a faculty perspective from an administrator or a technical perspective. It's very interesting. Oh, very cool. Well, thank you, Teresa. How about Saeed? Hello again, uh, Saeed Farudastan. I am the Associate Dean of the College of Basic and Applied Sciences at Middle Tennessee State University. I have been with the PSM program for about uh, 17 years, maybe from the day I started it, I guess I was involved. Uh, and at our university, PSM, we call it MSPS, is doing very well. It's one major with six, seven different concentration. And uh, I have my uh, Graduate coordinator, Ms. Suzanne here. She can tell you about those name of the concentration. I guess she's there. Thank you so much. And Perfect. I am director of the program, so yeah. Thank you, Saeed. And how about Kimberly? Hi there, I'm Kimberly Voigt and I'm the director of student services at the Casey Olathe campus. Um, so I'm not a faculty member, and, but we have a professional science master's in applied biosciences. And I work very closely with our program director, uh, Dr. Becky Studeville, who couldn't be here today. Okay, thank you, Kimberly. Uh, Suzanne? Yes, um, I'm Suzanne and um, I do work with Saeed Fruzdan. Um, I am um, considered a graduate coordinator. Um, so I, I kind of work closely with uh, Dr. Fritistan, as far as recruitment for um, our different concentrations and also helping students find their internships. Okay, and then last but not least, Tim. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, Tim Bourne at Grand Valley State University. Um, I'm currently the Associate Dean in our College of Engineering and Computing, but I spent five years as the PSM Programs Coordinator here at Grand Valley. We have programs in cell and molecular biology and biostatistics and 
um, health informatics and bioinformatics, and then one in data science and analytics. Um, and then I'm also the past past president of the NPSMA. So I rolled off the board this past year. So now I'm just a regular old everyday person at these meetings. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Um, I really appreciate you joining for the discussion. So our topic is connecting PSM students with industry mentors. So uh, would anyone like to kick off the discussion with some initial thoughts? I will say this, at our university, we graduating about maybe close, maybe to 40 a year, or maybe a little bit less. But the thing is, they have to do internship and no other way has to be a 250 hour minimum internship, high quality at the industry, which Ms. Suzanne will help a lot to find those. And we have a graduate coordinator from College of Business looking after them. And over close to 80% of them, they get a job offer at the place of internship. Mm. Connection between the student and the supervisor in the industry. And that has been really excellent advertisement and overall fantastic for our university. And every study day, every semester, they have to come to campus, those who graduating, and they present their internship to the whole campus, whoever wants to come. And their supervisor will come with them. And they get to know the future student in that program that they're going to hire, or they will hire. So it has been excellent contact between the industry and the student. Over 80% placement in their location of internship is really yeah. impressive. Yeah, because at the beginning, me and Ms. Susan tell them, you come to this program, internship is the final thing you have to do. I mean, make them ready. You know, with uh, the classes they take and we make them ready to be sure they are ready so they will do a fantastic job. And the average salary is amazing. It's more than our, some of our faculty here. <laughs> 65 to $75,000 a year. It's always tricky when, you're, uh, <laughs> when your students are, are going out with these really large salaries. But we are happy for you. Yeah. yeah. So, well, and Seema has joined us. Hi, Seema. We actually just started the discussion after doing a quick round of introductions. So maybe, Seema, you could uh, introduce yourself quickly. I'm from Temple University. I'm the Managing Director of Professional Science Masters, and I apologize for joining late. No, no worries. Um, well, thank you for joining us. So we were just, we had just opened the discussion about connecting industry mentors with PSM students. And Saeed had just shared some um, details about his programs, how they, about 80, well, he said over 80% of the students were actually taking jobs with their internship employers. So uh, uh, I'll say Grand Valley has a lot of similarities to Middle Tennessee and the fact that we have a required internship. Um, and uh, we do have at the end of each uh, fall, we do, I guess, in the fall semester, we have our, our internship students present and invite then their mentors to come as well. And so like at Middle Tennessee, that's a chance for those uh, mentors to be able to see the next group of students who are coming up and hopefully make those connections. Um, one of the things we found when we first started our program, we had our our coordinator of all the PSM programs located in our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and virtually nobody in that college does internships. And so we had somebody whose primary responsibility seemed to be finding internships in a college where that wasn't the norm. When I started, they had just moved into the College of Engineering and Computing where everybody does internships, um, which ended up making a larger difference than I would have expected, partly because there was a culture in this college of working with external partners, but mostly there was a large number of external partners we already had relationships with. And so when you went to talk to them and said, I was from the you know, Grand Valley State University from the College of Engineering and Computing, they already knew who that was and that it was a good partner. So that made a big difference for us. Um, and then the other thing I will mention about sort of being able to find those mentors is we also, um, uh, work well with our uh, career services group. 
um, who has a lot of connections to the local um, employment, uh, local employer sector too. I also like to mention these events. Sometimes we get students from industry, they already have a job and they want to come and get this master program. And they will say, what about internship? I don't have to, I said, no, they have to do the internship. Mm -hmm. But we let them to do that internship at the place of work, where they are working. It could be as a part of the eight to five hour, or they could do extra, whatever it is between them and employer. But they have to work on 250 hours of a new stuff, different from their regular job. And once they get done, they get promotion because they have learned this thing, you know? So that has been very good for them at the end. At the beginning, they don't like it, but at the end, they love it. Teresa, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, I was gonna say, <clears throat> when my program, I'll figure out how to lower my hand in just a minute. When my, when my program was first developed, uh, as a PSM program, we, we had our, our capstone called a semester in residence with the idea being that there would be an internship and that would, um, that would happen. And over time, you know, the, the program has um, changed to be online, which is really, and I know a lot of us have online programs now, it is really substantially impacting internships from a couple of perspectives. One of which is, um, my students aren't all real close. It used to be everybody's in San Diego County and you know I could use my contacts here and it would help. But now I have people from San Francisco and Arizona and I don't have the contacts. I have a very difficult time helping them arrange internships. And I don't think remote internships is anything necessarily my um, college uh, career center or internship office is prepared to do. I am actually, um, thinking of trying to change the nature of the capstone itself. Oh, furthermore, ab about, and, and maybe this is kind of unique to cybersecurity, uh, uh, cybersecurity masters, but a substantial number of our um, students are already employed and they're looking for a lateral or upward mobility within their organization. Mm. So there's no way they're going to go intern with somebody else or, you know, uh, I mean, so, so I, I'm finding this a real problem. Am I the only one finding it a problem? Okay, I'm going to lower my hand now as soon as I figure out how. Well, a quick question. Does, does their current job often qualify as an internship? Well, about, about uh, well, I don't know. I, I haven't done any numbers and, you know, the sample size would be low. But a substantial number of them are able to do a security project at their current work. So, you know, they've got some new new security thing they're doing. And so they take on the project, they're going to implement a firewall or a security incident event monitor, right? They're gonna do that at their current work. So yeah, a substantial number of them are able to do that. But we're also getting a lot of people who are, um, who are wanting to move into the cybersecurity field because, you know, there's so much demand for it. And, um, and I'm, I'm having a much harder time placing these adult people with a lot of experience um, in internship positions as if they were undergrads. So I'm having trouble with this and uh, I don't quite know how to... Yeah, you know, let me ask them. you this, what kind of bachelor or BS degree do they have? In the Typically they have a computer science undergrad. Was that your question? Yes. MIS or computer science. Um, sometimes we do get somebody with a really outside degree, communication or something like that, but then they've worked in the tech industry for a while. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to, you know, do the curriculum for the master's. Okay. And do you have enough students in that program? Is it, is it booming? Because I like that name. I was thinking maybe we add it to the school too. So do you get enough students to be interested in the program? You know, we do, we, we don't get a ton of people wanting to go into the master. So, I mean, we're running like 25, I think we have 25, 22 students in our current cohort and I haven't seen what it's gonna look like next fall. Okay. So not a ton, we have a lot more interest in our bachelors that we're about to bring up. Um, 
because it's, this is one of those things where, and we don't do, really do international students. So like uh, our computer science masters has a lot of international students and we don't, we have very rarely take international students oh, because, because of the bizarre, you know, security uh, situation we have around the world. But I forgot what I was gonna say now. <laughs> I started talking about oh, my train of thought. But I, I, I will say that, um, that, okay, I, I've lost it. I, I, I can no longer remember what I was going to. Okay. But it sounded like the, the issue of people who were more mid-career than trying to have to satisfy this internship requirement were running into this, this problem where if they can't do it at their current job, are they now in a position where they to finish degree, have, degree have to leave and go? Oh, to no, 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 no. Um, they, they have the option of completing a project or, you know, you know, and I'm often pushing them towards going and helping a nonprofit or somebody like that who otherwise wow. could not afford a cybersecurity expert to come in and evaluate. I mean, no, I mean, they, you know, they, they, they can do a number of things. It does not have to be an internship in order to complete their, um, their capstone. But people want internships, especially those who are, 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 are trying to break into the field. They want internships. And uh, you know, I, I, that's probably the most preferred um, way. And I, I'm having trouble placing them in internships. So Teresa, I, one of the things when I was a coordinator was I didn't um, sort of focus on the word internship. I focused on the experience of the student. So if a employer called it something else, I didn't care if they were still getting that experience, mm -hmm. that was fine by me. Um, yeah. So I didn't worry too much about that and told the students not to worry too much about that. Um, from what you've described, it sounds like you're doing most of the things that I think somebody could do for these mid-career people. Um, sometimes what we've done is they've been able, so for instance, if they're trying to to get a new skill that's not available in their department, and so they don't have a mentor in their department, we have suggested that they go find somebody in another department where they could do uh, sort, of, sort of get some experience that way. So if they want to move from programming to cybersecurity, maybe, it, you know, find a mentor somewhere else in that same company. The other thing that we've had with students who have wanted to make a real career change is, um, you know, they've completed all their coursework. And in some cases, they've actually been able to find new positions in that new area. And so what we've said is great, start your job, we'll count your first X number of weeks as your internship, mm -hmm. so we can give you credit for it. And the meantime, Time you've already switched your careers and you've got your job and you're moving on and therefore you get your degree as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. But that's, you know, for me, that sounds like that would be a pretty unique circumstance. And I'm not sure I could, I'm not sure I could do that. I mean, they have to produce a paper and publish it in the library. You know, I mean, they have to defend their master's thesis project or whatever. So yeah, I'm, but uh, you know, I've actually, and I totally do not mean to monopolize this conversation, but I'll just throw this out there because I've mentioned it once before. Um, there's a very well-known certification, high-level certification is being reviewed by uh, ACE, um, the, the expansion of that acronym, American, okay, King, anyway, as being graduate level, it's called a CISSP. It's really well-known in the cybersecurity world, very difficult. Um, probably like the end result of all the certifications you might get. I've been thinking of, of trying to somehow incorporate that into the capstone um, as an element, which isn't, doesn't comport with Title V, which we have to comply with in California. And there's a lot of other issues. And so I'm always curious to find out if anyone else is doing anything like that in practical terms across um, for certifications. In our program, like engineering management concentration or in actuarial science concentration, we have, they have certificates. When they take classes, it's not, it's optional, but they could go along and we recommend them to get those certificates, which is good for them. But internship is separate. 
they have to do the internship. Yeah. And in my program, they don't have to do an internship. They yeah, have okay, to do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we have yeah, no thesis, it has to be an internship. And as I said, if they are working at the job, if somebody goes in, talk to the supervisor and say, give this person a, a, a managerial job, something higher than what they do as a part of their internship, most of the time they love it. They agree a student wants to do something, employer, employee wants to do something new and in advance, Oh, they will go for that. Yeah. So those certifications are some of the things that we think are hallmarks of really good PSM programs because their students not only get the academic, they also get the professional skills that they need and yeah. they get some documentation for it. Um, I know in our statistics program, it's not required, but a lot of our students will then sit for the SAS certification exam because okay. they've had everything they need for it. And so when they graduate, they've got their degree and they've also gotten that SAS certification. So it's again, it's not a requirement, but um, it's something that's um, that we suggest to the students that they do because they've taken the coursework and gotten the experience they need to be able to do well on that certification exam. Yeah. yeah ours getting Six Sigma lean manufacturing certificate and actuarial one and also the biostat one, yeah, they all participate. Yeah. And sometimes these different groups that offer these certifications, um, for, an, for example, the Society of Actuaries, we, we have an undergraduate program in that, but they will recognize a program as, I think they call it a center for excellence, if it meets yes. a certain number of requirements. Yes. And then that- They got that this year, yeah. Oh, you, you did get that, say? Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's a very strong kind of badge to attach to the program itself, which which kind of uh, increases its, its footprint, I think, in the entire, whatever profession. Yeah. yeah. We have that from the NSA. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And that one, we get a lot of students from China on this actuarial one. And they do sometimes the internship in China. They go there in the new company, they do it and they come back. It's fine, yeah. Yeah, and with a with an area like that, once the students start passing the exams, you know, that's that's an industry thing and they get hired right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just also want to welcome Kristen. Uh, Kristen Huter was able to join us. So she's she's the NPSMA president. She had a commitment that had her not be able to join us at the beginning, but welcome Kristen. You know, one other thought I had, which is, a, I guess, uh, a little bit different than what we've been talking about. We haven't brought this back since COVID, but one thing that, that we were doing were these, you could call them mixers of alumni and students, uh, particularly for the financial math students. What we were doing was organizing, you know, I should say WPI is in Worcester, Massachusetts, which is about an hour drive from Boston. And WPI does have a facility in Boston and we were organizing every six months or nine months or so a, a financial event where we would have people from industry come and students come and alumni come. And one thing that we found is just putting people together in a room, uh, the students and the alumni and the other industry partners would just start talking and making connections and business cards are being exchanged. And I think students would end up with opportunities and connections that way. That, that was really effective for us. Our, our actuarial program, again, an undergrad program does something a little different, but I think it also works where they have a, uh, they have a networking night, but it's a dinner and they have students and industry connections come. But at this point, 90% of the industry people, industry people that come are alumni, but they're there to recruit and they're super excited to recruit students who did the program that they did. Yeah. And that works spectacularly. Yeah. Suzanne, do you want to talk about MSPS club? We take them different companies, go ahead. Sure, um, yeah, we have a, a monthly meeting where uh, we have 
people from the industry come in and talk to our students. Uh, we try to find uh, people that could cover multiple uh, concentrations and they come and talk about their company and what type of student intern they're looking for. And it makes those connections as well. Um, another thing that we have is um, we have a like a, a LinkedIn uh, group of our alumni and we invite our current students to join that so that they can make connections with, uh, like you were saying earlier, um, with alumni from the program who are wanting to give back and uh, you know, invest some time in some student interns. So that seems to work really well. So may I ask a question, Marcel? Of course. So uh, Marcel being in Boston and, and area and Teresa being in San Diego, you're in pretty dense urban areas where there are a lot of companies um, and presumably a lot of opportunities for your students. But I know Middle Tennessee isn't exactly in a densely populated area. UK Ole, I don't think is a very populated area. Um, uh, St. Mary's, it's pretty close to Chicago, but still a little ways away. Um, what? How have people, program directors, been able to find adequate numbers of uh, professional opportunities, internship opportunities for their students when you're not in this very densely populated business oriented area? Well, I can answer that very quickly for my program. It's online. <laughs> so a lot of our students are, are actually not in the South Bend area. Um, and those that are, uh, my, so our program is data science, um, and I run into a lot of the same issues. I think Teresa, you were when I when I came in. I think you guys were were discussing having the the mid career or late career uh, changers. How do you find placements? Um, it's a lot easier when when it's a you know young 20 mid 20s who is willing to relocate and, and and go anywhere for for a brief amount of time so we do a lot of projects remotely through our um you know departments various offices on campus that need help that need you know data science type help for free <laughs> um but but yeah us us being online was uh was it was a huge i think help for yeah, tackling that that problem you're alluding to, Tim. So I'm curious what 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 people who don't have online programs and are not in you know densely you know populated areas, urban areas. Even though Middle Tennessee is about maybe one hour from Nashville, less than one hour, but it has cities around it. But the key is, I don't believe it's a big deal. When you run a very good program, the industry will come to you. Uh, industry has been very good to us. We try to get industry involved within 150 mile radius of our university. We have been visited them, they have visited us, and the key is you give them one or two good interns and you don't put mm -hmm. it anymore. They come after you, they want more and more. The thing is the internship they do in the company, they could do it for free. It doesn't have to be paid, but over 90% of them, they get paid, okay? Because, and they stay more than the hours they needed to do because of what they do. And because our student, by the time they graduate, to me, they are ready to do it. It has been really good. At the beginning, we had to suffer a little bit, but once they start rolling and then we keep adding it. And then we have an advisory board, people, and those are people from the industry in our advisory board. We meet once a year because of the corona it has been bad, but we're gonna meet again in this uh, end of April with them. And we tell them they will, they will find us different companies from their network introduced to our student, you know, so, 
it is hard. That's why a couple of years ago, I told them I'm going to quit my job to being a, a PSM program, or I have to hire a, especially a internship supervisor to find a student internship. That's the end up with me, Susan. It helped a lot because it was, I have a faculty coordinator. It was hard for them to do that. So one of the main job of Ms. Suzanne is to find internship for these students. And she interviewed with them. She talked to them, talked to the industry. As I said, they have to put at least 25 people or 20 people every semester into the internship. So it is hard things, but it's possible. So I have a follow-up, Saeed. If, yeah. if you have internship partners mm -hmm. who are an hour to an hour and a half away, mm -hmm. are your students moving to where they are for their internship? Are they staying at the university and traveling back and forth? Are they doing it remotely? I ask because we've got a couple of good internship opportunities that are an hour or so away. Our international students can't get there because they typically don't have vehicles and our domestic students don't want to drive an hour each way. Uh, we usually don't like to do remote stuff. The internship is all possible, but we could do partly remote, but we want them to be at least partly on the industry, okay? Now, their internship, it has to be done at the last two semesters. We usually say do it the last semester when they have only internship left to do, okay? So they usually, they get paid and they move, they move to that location. Depends where it is, it's far away they do. International students, they have find a way to use that internship to stay in the United States. They fix their visa for the internship and usually they get a job offer. So they will do their best to find the excellent company that they could hire them after they finish the internship. So they had no problem. They usually find a place that is comfortable, is close to them, or they can move on. That's why we recommend this internship to be taken in the last semester. So they could do that. And on their presentation, if they end up to be out of state, we do let them to do Zoom presentation to the campus. They have to do the presentation, then they will do it. And our business core courses are taught by our college of business. And that helps a lot again with internship everything. Yeah. We do have yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we do have several uh, companies that have had um, multiple students. And um, I usually meet with the students six six months in advance of when they want to do their internship. Uh, so we kind of get them looking uh, at least six months in advance. And uh, one of the things that I do is I share a list of places where students have been previously and they can contact uh, those individuals that direction. And that's worked very well. Just having a list of uh, prior placement has worked real good. Obviously, being in Worcester and being an hour from Boston, we 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 don't have that much of an issue, you know, in terms of what's clear or what's close geographically. But uh, one thing that may help that I do, I try to connect our students with different industry groups that they could become members of that they wouldn't necessarily realize that they should on their own. So as an example, there's the, the Boston, the Massachusetts FinTech Hub, which financial technology, if you're studying math, data science, computer science, and you're interested in finance, this is something to get involved in. And they have a lot of virtual events. They have a lot of in-person events but they, the students need to be kind of shepherded towards these opportunities because they won't know to find them for themselves. And once they do, if they go to these things, they can make all kinds of great connections, but they need, they need to know where to go. Yeah. 
in fact, we're having a we're having a big event at WPI. It just happens to be at WPI as part of that fintech hub on Saturday. And I just last week emailed my PSM students in my class that they should consider going. So I, this this was kind of on my mind recently. And and they they'll go and they'll meet people from Fidelity and Putnam and State Street and Wellington. They'll meet people from all of these different companies. And as long as they're kind of prepared and can talk to everybody, they, they should be able to make some opportunities for themselves. So how do you prepare them, Marcel? Well, there's your, there's your soft skill stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's kind of a serious That's question. Do, do you prep them ahead of time for these? Um, I haven't, but I, I will talk with my students. I'll probably spend 15 minutes talking about it in, uh, in class tomorrow and just kind of getting them ready, you know, mentioning have some copies of your resume on hand, practice your elevator pitch about what you do and what you're looking for, uh, all these, these types of things. I do that. I do that too. Uh, you know, a, a large number of, uh, my students are already employed and not really planning to switch. So it's, I don't take up the time of the whole class doing it, but those who want to stay and talk to me, I, I talk about my experience as a hiring manager for the past billion years and uh, you know, what stands out to me and what, what doesn't stand out to me. And I, you know, I, I talk to them about how to talk to people and how to read the room and how to read who they're talking to. And so we do spend, uh, plus, of course, our program has, you know, some organizational behavior classes and other stuff. I mean, so we do spend some time on that. And specifically, I spend time on, uh, on this, what you're talking about right now, is um, getting a, an internship or a job afterwards and how to, get, how to do that. It's really worth it. It's very important that students know how to contact industry, you know. This new student, the young one, they just went, hey, how you doing? Do you have a job for me? You know, <laughs> but we have a course for them. Suzanne, do you want to talk about that? The business school courses, they learn even how to send a text, how to type a resume, uh, how to talk professionally. We, I mean, we even have a place for them. If they don't have a suit, tie, they can go and borrow some for that presentation, you know? These are huge things you need to learn because it is different. If you want to go for the industry as a master degree to get a good job, you have to present yourself like one, yes. And they need training on that, definitely. Especially now where a lot of people have done at least a year of schooling fully remote in pajamas and slippers. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, all these points about, you know, shepherding the students to the, you know, net, basically teaching them how to network, <laughs> um, you know, joining, joining certain groups, also bringing, um, bringing industry to campus, or at least, you know, getting industry involved in, you know, class or coursework or curriculum, so you're exposing the students um, to these opportunities even though our program is online, um, we require the students, uh, we technically bill it as a hybrid program, but um, because we require the students to actually come to campus um, for a couple of events um, throughout, throughout the program. Um, one is at the end when they do their capstone or practicum presentation. Um, and we like them to do that in person. But then also in the middle of the, of the program, we have a, a separate immersion experience um, where we have the students come to campus, they work in teams, we pair them with uh, an industry partner or some, some sort of community partner um, where they're doing, it's, it's almost like a mini practicum or a mini internship, you know, very, very uh, focused, um, intense, you know, few day uh, project. Um, but, but I found that that's a way to introduce um, students prior to, you know, looking for the internship, looking for um, those practicum placements. 
um, where you know they've they've had our program is two years. They've had a year of, of training. They can do some stuff. Um, they get introduced to um, some folks within the you know local industry, um, and they get some of that practice in a really you know condensed uh, condensed way. Um, and so, um, in a few occasions, it has led to some students um, not getting necessarily a formal internship, but you know, making a connection that they were able to find. We don't have an internship requirement, um, but but making a connection, they were able to to find a, a practicum project that they could you know collaborate with with somebody at you know one of these um, you know mini immersion uh, uh, events that's that's we we found has worked really well i mean and there there I mean, our program being in data science was was not an accident the, the data science is now everywhere so there's tons of data uh, data science companies uh, within south bend um i mean but even you know nonprofits and and government uh, offices have data science projects that they're looking for help on so so we've been able to easily find projects like that for these immersions um, that has then led into um, more substantial projects. Can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah. So like who, who does that? Are you doing that or do you have somebody? You're doing that? No, okay. The program director, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a bad program director. <laughs> No, you are not. <laughs> well, I, I, I am I am not keeping up with you know industry contacts and stuff in the same way. Um, yeah, but it, it's a lot of work. I know. I guess it I'm is. Just, and there exist programs that have people that are hired just for that, and that's it. Yeah. Well, we're about to um, bring up our bachelors. I mean, we're getting ready to do that. And so I think we'll have somebody who, you know, does cybersecurity programs and does that for both. And um, I, I think that'd be real helpful from my perspective. Uh, we just brought the data science to our university for a, a PhD program, which is not a PSM. We just finished the, the PhD and it's starting. So. It's good. But as we mentioned, it is huge important that we train our students, especially those that they don't have a industrial experience, how to handle themselves, how to do interviews in the industry. There is things they really need to know in order to do a good internship and get an excellent job. Mentorship is huge. And we recommend mentorship all the time. Like each of my concentration has its own faculty coordinator. They can go talk to, you know, talk to Miss Suzanne, talk to me, talk to the, when they do internship, you know, we have a course. What's the name of the course, Miss Suzanne, they take? Uh, it's uh, in the business school course. They learn about- uh, Managerial, managerial communications. Managerial mm -hmm. kind of communication. They take that class and they learn about all of these things in that class, how to present, how to do survey, how to do everything. So it is really important that they get trained. That make a huge difference. Okay, uh, well, we're getting towards the end of the time. Does anybody else have any uh, any topics that you wanted to discuss that we haven't discussed yet? I guess you've discussed this, but um, and um, you know alluded to it. But I think it's it's worth our while, whether you know, regardless of how busy we are, um, to carve out say one afternoon every two months or so to go visit our external advisors or create new contacts. Um, that's how we've built our relationships. And uh, when I have gone to uh, regional industry, um, and before they became partners and friends of the program or advisors. Um, you know, we, we did a whole campaign, cold calling, LinkedIn, etc. you know, 
And then whenever I've gone, I've always taken uh, someone with me um, that represents the university, not just the program. So someone from the dean's office or the provost's office. So it's, it's more like my university is reaching out to them as opposed to um, a program or you know, one person. Um, and so I've always gone in a team. Uh, we've taken a couple of people from the college, someone from the university, and, um, and then we've invited them immediately you know, for a lunch or whatever. Uh, and that's really helped develop the relationships. And then of course, the part two is you train the students on how to speak to them once they come on campus, which also was spoken of. But I think it's, um, it's, it's a worthwhile investment of time um, because it, it is, there's a large payoff of that. I mean, they really feel connected with the university uh, you know, once you visit them or you invite them for a visit. That makes sense. Yeah, is uh, NTSMA have made a decision if they're gonna accredit the programs or not yet? You're not talking about? Did you mm -hmm. say accreditation? Yeah. So we, we talked about that a number of years ago, maybe five years ago, we ultimately decided we would go with the affiliation route, not the accreditation route. Accreditation had an awful lot more work on the part of the programs, cost a lot more money. Um, it didn't seem like something that the PSM programs were interested in. Our affiliation seemed like it was still the way to go. Okay, okay. yeah, I remember. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, um, I know, uh, Kristen may have had a few things that uh, she wanted to mention. Kristen, do you want to take the floor with some closing thoughts? I just wanted to plug a couple of things. <laughs> um, we're talking about the importance of networking for our students. Uh, we should uh, employ those skills ourselves and uh, network our programs, network our PSM programs. So I'm just putting a plug in for everybody to, if you haven't already followed uh, the various NPSMA social media accounts, we're on all of the major platforms. Uh, Instagram is coming, but we are currently on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, LinkedIn. Um, uh, so if you haven't already uh, followed our accounts uh, with your you know, various institutions, uh, please do. Um, we we also would, you know, be happy to to post anybody's you know uh, PSM related content on on our platforms, um, especially if your institution has rules <laughs> about what you can and cannot post. We don't have any rules yet. Um, we did actually in a board meeting discuss uh, creating a TikTok account. So. Um, We'll see. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, look, stay tuned um, for, you know, more, more content from on social media to be to be pushed out uh, through through throughout the year. Um, Linda Strasbaugh and her team are um, uh, are ready to, to start disseminating a MS IDP. Um, uh, template that was developed at the conference uh, in, uh, and, and workshop in November. Um, so this is a tool to, again, help students, help our students um, kind of map out and track their, their professional development um, and, and their, their career trajectories. Um, so stay tuned for uh, announcements um, on how to gain access to that. I believe NPSM members uh, will probably um, be getting some information about the about that um, probably sometime around the summer, over the summer. Um, we have kind of a phased out plan to roll out access to that. Um, they're calling it the MSIDP bronze version. Um, and the goal is to, um, you know, get get the bronze version in, in folks' hands, get it uh, used, uh, you know, get some feedback, just keep making it better and better, so we can start going up, going up the levels, um, and really, you know, hopefully get a, a really useful tool. 
um, that we can, you know, widely disseminate and, and share. Um, and then the last plug, I know Marcel, you already, um, I believe mentioned the uh, upcoming months away conference at the uh, end of the year. Uh, so I um, hope everybody can safely make it to San Diego. The conference planning committee is, is furiously working um, to uh, get a, uh, you know, a, a draft of a program uh, up on online uh, so that uh, we can start getting um, getting folks to register uh, for that event. Hopefully we'll start having more details and information about the event by the end of the month. That might be a little too soon, uh, but definitely we hope sometime in May. I, uh, I, I keep you know forgetting that it's very close to the end of April already. <laughs> We're over the halfway point. So, um, so stay tuned for, for, for more information about, about the conference. Um, I'm really excited about, about what the, the committee is, is putting together. I'm really excited for, the, uh, for, for that event. And it's in an excellent location. San Diego yeah. is like one of the best locations. And Teresa, you got some good people working on it with us. <laughs> Are they going to have like for people coming to present or apply for presentation or something like that? Or is it going to be a session that different people can submit and come do presentation stuff for others? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. We'll, we'll um, be putting out a call for, for proposals and, um, you know, the, the committee's kind of got some ideas on, um, you know, sessions uh, that they have planned out. This year marks the uh, 25th anniversary of PSM programs. Um, so that is, that is essentially the theme. So we'll, uh, we'll be kind of looking back and reflecting over the last 25 years um, and then also um, learning from, from, yeah. from, from that past and looking forward to the you know, next. Are we, gonna, are we gonna have any special deals for a student to attend like the waiving the registration and stuff, something for a student to be able to attend the conference? Yeah, I think we're we are working out all of the the pricing and everything like that. Um, and we, I mean, we'll be we'll be holding um, the student uh, presentation competition um, that is that is traditionally held. Um, so hopefully, we can get some students to to attend, not only to present but also maybe to uh, yeah support other students presenting. I do know that the price, the the student registration fee is always significantly uh, cheaper uh, than the uh, traditional uh, professional registration fee. I think that's all I've got to plug. <laughs> okay, well, perfect timing. That brings us right to the five thirty. Well, here on the East Coast, five thirty mark. Um, or Teddy of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for coming and for, for participating. This is a great discussion. And um, I look forward to seeing you all soon and hopefully at the next one, which we will shift back to the Thursday times for the Ask NPSMA sessions. Thank you everybody for being okay with the change. I, I teach on Thursdays from uh, actually three to 5.30. So that, that took the usual slot out for me this spring, but spring's over in two weeks. So. <laughs> All right. Hasn't even come yet in some places, Marcel. It's already hey. over, huh? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, we're still getting snow. Did you get snow, Tim? Uh, yesterday, not today. Yep. Hey, oh, last yesterday. week, we got hail, we got tornado, but God, God, yeah. us. everything went okay. <laughs> All right. See everybody. Okay. Well, Take thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Marcel. Bye, guys. Bye.